Hey guys and welcome to the new episode of Full Throttle and today we finally have the BMW M4 competition with us and today we will see how this car is like to drive, we'll see how fast it is and of course we'll have to talk about the looks. But first let's sit behind the wheel because that's what really matters about an M car. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the best car content on YouTube and follow us on Instagram for some of the best car photography that you can find. But what really defines an M car is the way it drives. And trust me, forget about the looks of this car because its performance is amazing. I mean, the previous generation of the M4 was good, but it was too edgy, too nervous. And yes, it was kind of fun, but in a bit of an immature way. This car, yes, is a lot more mature, there's much more traction, but overall, it's a much more capable vehicle. And even in the wet like this, you can actually put down the 510 horsepower, which is definitely something the previous model couldn't do. Let's start with the engine and the gearbox. Here we have the S58, which is the M version of the B58, which is pretty much the best straight six cylinder on sale today. The engine is extremely responsive and let me demonstrate to you. We're now in third gear. I push down the throttle and there's immediate response. There's absolutely zero turbo lag, which is not something we get on the previous model. And yes, the big drama over the gearbox because the dual clutch is gone and you're left with a torque converter. But trust me, this gearbox is very capable. Let me put it in here in drive. It downshifts immediately and I don't see absolutely no issues whatsoever. Yes, there is not as much drama as with the DCT where the whole car shakes, but rest in that, you probably will never notice the difference between the speed of the shifts, but you will notice definitely how much more civilized the gearbox is when you're driving normally. The car is very smooth, there is none of that guessing of the DCT of which gear you should be in, and overall it's a 100% better gearbox for 90% of the time where you're driving the car, so I can see why BMW chose it. Yes, it doesn't give you that too sporty feeling as much as it, but it's still very, very good. And let's get to the main thing about the car, how it drives in the turns, because trust me, this is where this car shines. I don't think there is a car short of supercars that is so capable. Even if it's rear wheel drive, the traction is outrageous. Let's talk about traction because that is the next super impressive thing about the car. You simply could never do this with the previous generation. Traction is superb and I definitely prefer this way compared to the angry and sometimes scary nature of the previous model and I don't think you need the X-Drive at all, I mean this car has so much grip even in the wet, maybe if you get a lot of snow you could get the X-Drive but I think it will only make the car worse to drive, but I haven't tested it yet and let's talk about sound because the car sounds very good yes i know some of that sound or maybe most of it is through the speakers but just hear it it's very loud and it has a deep sound unlike the f models you definitely feel like in a sports car and i think it even sounds maybe better than the m5 there is that deep roll and i think it's addictive Overall, I think BMW has gotten all of the elements that make an M car great. I haven't had the chance to drive it around town because we are on a short trip here, but for dynamic driving, I think the car is superb, much better, much more capable than the previous model at going fast, and at the same time, more confidence is powering for the people who are not into having wheel spin 99% of the time. I think BMW has done an outrageous job and I wish people started looking over the looks of this car because they would discover that this is an absolute monster to drive and Audi RS4 and even the Merc I don't think they will make such a machine because trust me this car it is amazing. 
And now let's see what times we are going to get from this BMW M4 competition. As you can see, unfortunately, it's raining, so just like in Car Wow's videos, you will have to complain down in the comments, but let's get to it. And let's check out what's under the hood of the new BMW M4 competition. Here we have the S58, which is a brand new 6-cylinder 3-liter petrol engine. Here we have 510 horsepower in this competition trim. And if you get the non-competition trim, which nobody really wants, you'll get 480 horsepower. Now, what's interesting is that you can only get the manual transmission in a non-competition car. And if you want the competition, you get an automatic. And for the X drive, the power figures remain the same, but the acceleration is a bit quicker. We have 3.6 here in the rear wheel drive and 3.3 for the X drive model, but perhaps it will be even faster than that. Now, let's check out how this BMW M4 competition sounds. Of course, it's a 2021 model with all the OPF filters and shit, but still, BMW claims it will sound better than the previous model. What do you think? Write down in the comments below. Now let's hear it. Wow, definitely sounds deeper than the previous model. And there's some props too. I like it. The sixth new generation of the M3 and the M4, we have the most major changes we have seen in years. And the model has gotten really complicated because you have the normal version, you have the competition version, you have a manual, you also have an automatic, and you have an X drive model, which you have all wheel drive, something we have never seen on an M3 or an M4 before. So, at least on theory, this car is simply worse than the previous model. It's bigger, it's heavier, and it isn't that much faster, at least on paper. So why BMW claims that this is the best M car they have ever made? Well, there's only one way to find out. And unfortunately, we have to start with the grill. And yes, it was quite shocking when it first appeared online, but then people started seeing the car in person and they were like, it's not so bad. And for me, it kind of works with the rest of the design. Yes, it's a bit shocking when you first see it, but when you see the whole car, and especially the whole front of the car, which is extremely busy, extremely muscular, the grill just works. And you also have these creases here on the hood. The car is simply much wider than the regular 4 Series. You get this super deep bumper here, and generally, it's a very aggressive and very distinctive looking car. And I said this about the previous M4, but this definitely definitely looks like a supercar when you see it on the road. And compared to the F-Series, you definitely do get a lot more difference between this and the standard 4 Series. And I think that's how an M model should be. On the side of the car, we get these massive 20-inch wheels with the carbon ceramic brakes, which are an expensive option, but might be worth it if you're going to track your car. But here is something new about this BMW M4 that we're seeing with the manufacturer. BMW saw how much the aftermarket is expanding on these models, and they decided to start selling the parts as M Performance. If you have watched the new M Performance wheel sets, they do look like they came straight from a tuning shop and the rest of the M performance parts are just as extreme and I think it's pretty cool that BMW decided to give the customers an OEM option about buying better looking parts. So the side of the BMW M4 here is where the difference between the M3 and the M4 comes. The M3 is the sedan which has four doors and the M4 is only sold with two doors and there won't be any Grand Coupe. Now, as I said in the video about the 4 Series, I didn't like this part of the car because it was just bland. But here with this massive wheel arch, the car just looks muscular and I think the design works. It's a very distinctive piece which definitely gives the car a look that kind of looks like it has a white body kit. Another pretty cool detail about the BMW M4 is this carbon roof which is standard but you do get this aerodynamic creases on it which only shows that every panel on this car is made to be functional. 
Now the back of the BMW M4 is one of those angles you're not sure when you see them in the pictures but when you see the car in real life you're like wow it definitely looks very extreme it's super wide just like in the front and you get a much more pronounced bumper the car is wider than the regular model and because this is a competition model you get a black badge here you have the exhaust tips in black they're also much wider in diameter compared to the previous model and you get a much more pronounced diffuser which you can have in carbon fiber and it looks pretty cool you get a spoiler and overall i think the back of the car looks amazing and even though talking about the trunk space of a car like an M4 is kind of lame, we have to show it anyway. And it's in fact pretty decent. You get 430 liters, which is not too much, but it's definitely enough for a sports car like this. And if there are any questions about the exterior of the car, the interior of the car is amazing and there is no doubt about it. First we have to start with this amazing carbon fiber seats which not only look extremely sporty but are in fact very tight and you get the feeling that you're in a race car. You also get this middle part here which people have labeled a penis holder which looks kind of funny but its actual purpose is to separate your legs and keep you still. But it can get a bit uncomfortable if you are bigger uh, but still. The seats are actually pretty fine even on long journey center, not too extreme but maybe you should think about how you're going to be using this car because on like 5 hour drives they might get a bit too tight. The rest of the interior is amazing, we have this combination of silver leather and carbon fiber everywhere and finally BMW decided to upgrade the paddles because they saw that everybody was buying them from AliExpress. So now you get carbon fiber gear paddles which are very nice to use and you also get carbon fiber on the steering wheel which looks very sporty but that's an M performance trim that you have to buy extra. The rest of the interior you get an iDrive system and you have special M dials which look definitely better than the original ones and here in the center console are the main differences between this car and the regular 4 series. Now you get a new gear lever which is only for the models and looks very nice and feels good in your hand. You get a red start and stop button which is a bit of a gimmick but I think it looks cool and you get this big M4 competition sign right here. Overall very sporty very high quality interior which I think is the best of the class right now. Even though the M3 is the more functional of the two cars, the reality is that in the back of the M4 it's not so bad at all. You actually get a view of this beautiful carbon fiber seat and you get this very cool M lever that you pull it to put it back. It's all electric of course and as you can see even the headroom is decent and the knee room is also okay but given that the front seat is not pushed all the way back. So the BMW M4 truly managed to impress me. I recently had a conversation about how none of the new cars we have tested truly managed to grab me and this one it did. Everything about the M4 is distinctive. It looks, even if you like it or not, you cannot deny that it looks like a special car. The interior is amazing, the seats, the steering wheel, everything about it is just so sporty and focused and the engine and gearbox are amazing too. The car is very fast and maybe for the first time the M3 can actually put down all of its power in all conditions, which is something that's new and something that I do enjoy. A much more capable car than the previous generation and a much easier to live with on a daily basis. Overall, I think BMW have really outdone themselves and made one of the best M cars that I have ever driven.